bonjour ciao and welcome back to my channel for those of you who don't know me my name is Tolu and I am a second year medical student at the University of Oxford but this video is not all about me it's all about medicine this time I've brought some lovely lawyers to help film and um, to tell me a bit more about their experiences studying law at Oxford so I'll let them introduce themselves hi I'm Plina I'm a first year law but Spanish law student and I'm Rupert also a first year law student Amazing. So the first thing I want you guys to help me answer is, and it's really general, but what is your degree? What is law slash jurisprudence? Tell me a bit more about what you guys do and explain it in a way where the audience will help understand it a little bit better. Um, do you want to take this one? Absolutely. Throw me under the bus. Um, so technically the law degree at Oxford is jurisprudence, which means it's the philosophy of law. And technically the Oxford law degree is not meant to be a qualifying law degree in the sense that it doesn't get you ready for practice. But we do an extra mooting program, which means that you can practice at the end. What is mooting? Mooting is essentially like uh, mock debating. trials, debating, yeah, debating yeah. on points of law. Um, and so the law degree generally is just very structured. You'll study things like criminal law, uh, Roman law, land law, trust law, and then you get two optional subjects as well uh, in your final year. Yeah. I think about like the Oxford Law degree, like there's very little choice in comparison mm. to other places. Like we get two options like throughout the three, four years that you do here. Amazing. And Pulina, you do law with Spanish law. Yeah. How is that slightly different to So I law? have um, a Spanish class once a week and then second year you have Spanish law classes as oh. well. Like I have been informed, I haven't <laughs> experienced them yet. <laughs> and then third year you do um, your year abroad. So I'm going to go to Barcelona um, and yeah. And then join the year below to yeah. finish, like the third year, but fourth year. What about you, Mr. Straight Law? Mr. Straight Law, there's no language <laughs> classes. It's just, yeah, one and a half tutes a week. So, yeah, one tute yeah. every week, and then we have another class every week. Okay. Like yeah. Amazing. Um, and why did you guys choose to study jurisprudence slash law? Um, I think it's just like a really interesting subject and like the way you would study history and stuff like, I don't even want to go into law like I don't think the practice of law is the same like as mm -hmm. the subject and I think like when you're applying like consider that because like you don't have to do a law degree to become a lawyer yeah. like um, make sure you actually enjoy the subject and you're ready to read the cases and like the critical theory behind that yeah, I suppose I'm on a bit of a different trajectory in the sense that I do want to do <laughs> law after. So I did a bit of law at school and that was sort of really interested me. And then I went to like the courts and I read about law and then I know that I want to go into a career in the law essentially. Amazing. Um, so continuing on from that, um, what universities did you guys apply to? Because I know Rupert, you're an international student from Australia. And Plina, are you an international student? I'm an international student, yeah. but I studied like in sixth form in the UK. Okay, so tell us a bit about your application process and your experiences applying to Oxford, and then talk a bit more about the other universities that you've applied to as well. Um, so I mean, I did the normal like application through UCAS and stuff, and I think I applied to Oxford, UCL, KCL, Bristol, and Nottingham. Mm -hmm. And like, well, with law, you have to take the LNAT, and they were all like LNAT universities, and that's like a test you have to do before um, application. And I think law is one of the few subjects like where, apart from Oxford, you have like supplementary sort of test and medicine yeah. as well, obviously. Yeah. So um, do your research to know yeah. if you have to do any pre-admissions tests, because um, quite a few subjects do require them here. So yeah. Yeah, okay. that was pretty much the same for me. Um, just applying through the UK's portal, I think it was the same as it would be um, for international. But of course, we have to do like visas as well. Um, I applied to Oxford, Durham, UCL, KCL, and um, LSE, all to do law. Um, but it's pretty standard application process, as Polina said, LNAT, not really too much yeah. bad in that regard. Why did you apply to UK universities and not universities back home? Um, so I ended up studying here for like the past five years, mm -hmm. um, so I felt like this is like closer to me culturally, yeah. and like I speak the language better than Russian and mm -hmm. like my, yeah, my native language. Um, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I was always attracted by the like international experience, getting away from Australia and getting to <laughs> yeah, Australia. <laughs> Sorry, we won't even talk about that. I won't go into that. But getting away from Australia, I've really enjoyed my time here. Um, getting to meet people from a whole bunch of different cultures from all over the world. Um, and then the, I guess the the caliber of the universities here really is unparalleled, especially when it comes to the law degrees. Um, and in Australia, law is generally a postgraduate degree, so I would have had to study an undergraduate degree 
and then study law. Um, whereas since I knew that I wanted to go into law after, I thought I might as well just go the fast route and do an undergrad. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Um, what did you guys do in your application that you think helped boost it and like help you sort of attain a place here? Um, I think the main thing that I would say, I guess just a general tip is like, you hear it a lot, but like show, don't tell. So it was really, if you've read a book, it's all good and well putting it in your personal statement, but you want to really take something away from it, what you learnt about it. And same with all the experiences that you have. So say I went to the courts in Australia and I, I put that in my personal statement, but that sort of wouldn't be enough on its own. So then I went into like how when I was at the courts, I saw a jury impanelment in progress and then I went into like research that, the pros and cons of the juries and then come to like a final conclusion as to the worth of juries and I thought that really sort of showed that I took something away from that experience mm -hmm. rather than just going there for, for the sake of it. I think that might have helped my yeah. application. 100% like that's applicable to like every degree that you do yeah. to apply here so definitely show what you've learned from your experiences, like these are your collective problem rather than just literally name dropping stuff because tutors are more than aware that people will have access to like different types of work experience all that stuff but it's more a case of showing how you have learned from it and what you're passionate about because that will definitely sort of transcend through the application process. Um, and I guess what Rupert's talking about is, is his experience with supercurriculars. So essentially supercurriculars are just things outside of your school curriculum in line with your subject that just shows your interest outside of school essentially and it's one sort of, like, one of the sort of key things that Oxford Tutors are looking out for. So I think I sort of recommend in terms of like writing your personal statement an 80-20 ratio of supercurriculars and other stuff to so definitely make sure that if you are wanting to apply you definitely show your interests in your subject outside of doing things in school. So I guess Polina can talk about our experiences um, as well. Yeah so I, I actually like Rupert also went to the Crown Courts and I like what like witnessed um, sort of the criminal trial and it was really interesting and like in my personal statement like I tried to make it like a journey like mm -hmm. I did this and then that led me to sort of research yeah, this and really um, so I did an EPQ on like um, how prevalent sexism is in the what British is EPQ um, so it's like um, I think it's like half an A level yeah. and it's like an extended like research project and it's like a lot of reading independent research and then you produce like a 5,000 word essay at the end yeah um, and I, I like if that's an option that you have I really recommend like it was quite it, it prepared me for like how Oxford was because it was like a lot of independent reading researching and just like working on your own rather mm -hmm. than like in a classroom yeah amazing what other things would you recommend people do in terms of helping with applications so any other supercurricular ideas because obviously in pandemic it may be a bit more tricky to attain rather than work experience but I guess after this video is all put out do you have any other suggestions as to what people could do to help with our application like any book recommendations online lectures of some sort like anything that you guys have that you think could help the people watching um in terms of super curriculars I'd say that a lot of law firms particularly in the US and UK have those online programs with like inside Sherpa um, or Coursera at the moment, which might be interesting to give you a bit of an insight into the day-to-day -day life of a lawyer. Um, so it's not necessarily... Yeah, not necessarily... I mean, <laughs> not necessarily applicable to like a law student, mm. but I think that, that could, I guess, show your interest a bit beyond yeah, the course. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, out of books, I really recommend like Eve Was Framed by Helena Kennedy. That was a really interesting one. And um, sort of like Letters to a Law Student. I think that's like a classic one that people mm. tend to read. And they've got things like before the application process and like tips as well for like when you get in and stuff like that. Yeah, one thing about books though is be very careful. If you are going to put down a book that everyone reads, make sure you add something that makes you stand out a little bit more. So like I know for me, um, off track talking about medicine, I put down a book called The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hatman application. And that's like one of the most bait books ever to read for medicine. But I spun in a way that sort of showed me showed my interest in neuro by doing other neuro things. So like you said, you spoke about having a journey, try and find a way to in, like to include that in there because otherwise you'll just literally merge with the crowd. You need to do something that'll help you stand out among other people. So if you are going to do something that's very sort of common, do something else that just adds a little bit of pizzazz, you know, a little pizzazz to your application and then go from there. Okay, all good? Yeah, I'd also really recommend reading like um, current affairs and like keeping yeah. up with the news. Like I got like the Economist subscription that was like really good value. It was like um, like it was like almost a, I think about a pound per edition like mm. in the end and online. And like because for the LNAT like that's quite important in the application process. Like I think in Oxford especially, 
Um, and there's like an essay section uh, which like does require you to show knowledge like mm -hmm. of what is going on in the world like you don't need legal knowledge like I, I unlike Rupa I didn't do any law like at school um, but that is quite important and like helpful yeah I think a lot of um, sort of newspaper outlets some have student discounts as well so if you don't want to pay like upfront yeah. costs, some of them do have student discounts so check that out uni days are really helpful for everything literally um, but check that out or check if like your school has access to a subscription or something just so you don't necessarily have to pay for it but if you want to feel free but you don't have to um, but the next question for me is what is your favourite thing about your degree so far? Um, I think my favourite thing is probably the tutorials um, it's been a bit difficult with COVID in the sense that we didn't have in-person tutors mm -hmm. um, over the first two terms here but this term we've started having in-person um, and so it's you, two other students, I have Polina in my, yeah. in my contract tutorial, and then uh, the tutor as well, obviously, and you just sort of discuss your ideas um, related to the essay. Um, he might ask you to summarise case law that we've read or journals that we've read. I just feel it's really um, a great opportunity for the tutor to, to push you and ask you why you think the things that you do or why the law is the way that it is. And I just find that that's um, a very enjoyable part of the work mm. for me. Um, I also think it's so cool, like when on the reading list, it's like papers by your professor, and like you go <laughs> yeah. to the tutorials, and they're like, oh, so when I said this, da da da. Oh, I sp spoke to this judge about this case, and we laughed about how like erroneous yeah. or like questionable his judgment was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing that you you will get here, but you won't get anywhere else. You'll yeah. have literally the people who've written the books, the textbooks teaching you one-on-one, -on -one. so like last year one of my tutors, all of our stuff to do with like cardiovascular stuff was from his textbook. So you'd be like, oh, refer to page, this page, what did I put in here? Like, you like <laughs> yeah. yeah, our textbooks right now, <laughs> one is by one tutor and the other is yeah. by the other tutor. <laughs> it's so funny. So essentially you are being taught by like the best of the best, which is really great. Um, so you do get like really sort of high quality standards of teaching, but you literally work anywhere else. So that's one thing that I do really appreciate about Oxford. Um, I, I guess saying that though, because you have the best of the best, you can't, you can't like, you can't force it. You have to kind of, you know, exceed expectations because you are being taught by the best and you have to sort of try your best to produce also best, like equivalent, good work. That doesn't make sense, but hopefully you understand what I mean. But I guess continuing on from that from your favourite things, what is the worst thing or like your least favourite thing about your degree? Um, I think, like the like you said, the workload is very large, and like the reading lists are huge, and like you, I always feel overwhelmed each mm. week that I haven't finished like the reading list. Like even if you do the compulsory ones, they have like additional ones, and then additional readings to the additional readings, and like you find yourself thinking like, oh, I, I don't like I feel so unprepared, but um, I think there comes like a point like towards like after your first term you come to accept that you're never gonna get like all of the stuff done and mm -hmm. you just have to be selective and like work smart not hard yeah working smart not hard is like key bit of advice yeah yeah i don't know that there's a necessarily bad thing but the least good thing <laughs> would be definitely reading secondary literature and journals so critical opinions on the law i very much enjoy application of the law to problem questions which you might see in exams which is where you get a set of facts and you have to go through and say what offences have been committed or what civil wrongs um, and I find there I don't necessarily have to analyse why the law is the way that it is, how it could be reformed so I just don't enjoy reading the secondary <laughs> literature I'd much rather just say this is what the law is and I'll just take it that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's really interesting because for me it's like the other way I prefer the essay questions and like the, like the critical articles that are like questioning it mm -hmm. and like um, I'd rather like write an essay than a problem question. <laughs> Each to their own. Yeah. Each to their own. <laughs> Civil wrong is a taught. Civil wrong is a taught, that's yeah. correct. That's B in the background. <laughs> Our access and economic affairs officer. <laughs> she, she tends to help support my videos. You may recognise her voice from the PPE video and from the history video. She is <laughs> a great asset to my channel. <laughs> okay, next question is, what is the most difficult part of your degree? I guess, I guess, yeah, on the, the workload, yeah. I suppose. Is probably, it, yeah. It's like the reading, yeah, like yeah. we said. Um. I, think, I think it's hard, especially for law, because it is all very self-directed. You really need to be motivated and determined to do it yourself. The tutors at Oxford aren't, like, they're obviously there to help and encourage and support you, 
but you really need to be self-motivated and start the reading yourself mm. and, and launch into it, especially because we only have a couple of contact hours a week. It's really, the burden is on you to get the work done and that could definitely be difficult and it certainly was at the start of the degree, mm. um, but give it some time and you get used to it. Yeah, I do find it's like a little bit repetitive and like what you do in the sense that you read the textbook, you read the cases, you read the critical articles and then you write an essay and you do that like week one to eight. like. Well, we've done that three times. Yeah, you can do it for the rest of the degree. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. gonna keep it going from now on. Yeah. But to be fair, um, Rupert mentioning the whole idea of being unmotivated is very much prevalent in all sorts of degrees. Like in my history video, the same thing was mentioned because the workload for many many degrees is very intense. Um, and because we're all adults, and your teachers don't necessarily tell you what to do and when to do it, it is a case of you just telling yourself to get out of bed and doing things on time because you won't necessarily be pushed to do it, um, yeah. which you may miss from like secondary school days. So I miss my teachers telling me what to do because it gave me a sense of direction. However, I don't really have that now. And I guess you guys don't have yeah. that either. So it's a case of really doing things by your own accord. So enjoy your school time, kids, because <laughs> when you become an adult, it's all, <laughs> everything's on your own from that point onwards. Downhill from there. Really much so downhill from there. No, no, not downhill, it's actually okay. But it's just a case of you being motivated to do things and finding ways to get yourself motivated. Um, but yeah, I guess next part I want to ask you is, aside from your subject, how is Oxford life in general? How are you finding it being here? And I guess for you guys it's a bit weird because your, your experience of Oxford is pandemic. Um, but aside from, I, can't, I guess you can't really aside the pandemic, it's literally what you've been doing all year. But how has your time at Oxford been, considering that you've not had access to as many things as I had done when I was a fresher? Um, well, I've really enjoyed it. I think specifically in terms of Keeble, it's been a really welcoming atmosphere. There's everything that you could need here. Um, <laughs> yeah. The Keeble Library has fortunately opened this term, so that's great. I've only been once, admittedly, <laughs> oh, but God. it's always good to have the option there. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of like wider university things, there's so many societies to get involved with, and whether you just do like one event a week, one event a term, or you work hard and try and join the committee, there's always something. So I'm trying to run for the General Committee of the Law Society and I'm um, the secretary of the Australian New Zealand Society, but then there's also a whole bunch of other just opportunities and one-off events that you could go to. Rupert's a busy boy. Yeah, but I, I think that's one of, one of the best parts of Oxford, just having so many options. Really. Yeah. yeah, so sure. many opportunities. And like I think at the start, like a keyboard especially, has been really good in organising socially distant events. And like we had more of a freshers week than like a lot of other colleges, and like props to Fiona for organising that, another <laughs> lawyer. Um, cause we had the marquee and everything, mm. but yeah, I agree with Rupert. Like there's just so much to do, um, and so many options. Yeah. That's one thing that's really great about Oxford. You just have a lot of opportunities to do lots of things, like regardless of your subject. So I know Rupert talked about a lot of things that he's doing outside of college, but there are also loads of opportunities within colleges. So we've got this thing called the Junior Common Room, which is essentially like student body collective, undergraduate student um, collective. And um, within that you've got committees that you can be a part of. So Rupert is currently the... Who are you? The careers and alumni. <laughs> the careers and alumni officer. <laughs> I'm secretary, and then please. I'm on the freshers committee. She's on the freshers committee. So there's literally so much to do to get involved within college, and even within that, it's great to sort of get to know other people around college. So like me as a second year, I like in other universities you wouldn't really sort of engage with people below you or people the year above, but like mm -hmm. the whole college sort of system allows you to integrate with many many years and many many people, which is really really great. Um, I, help, I guess it's helped you guys settle in a bit more, especially with this really weird pandemic year. Yeah. So, yeah, it sounds awesome. Um, but do you guys have like any final bits you guys want to add about law? Like anything from the top of your head before I move on to the very last question? No. Not no, I good. don't think so. Amazing. Okay, so my very last question, and you guys are allowed to have a little bit of time to think about it, is what is one bit of advice that you want to give future lawyers? who are considering applying to Oxford or just to any university in general? Considering applying? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe make sure you enjoy the subject, like law is quite like specific and I think like a lot of people get attracted to it because of the idea of like the law, like lifestyle, like mm -hmm. I'm working as a solicitor barrister, but like this is three or four years of reading cases and case law and like um, like critical opinions of the law so like please make sure you actually like the subjects <laughs> yeah for sure yeah I think it's sort of a, a subsidiary point to that but you just got to come across as like determined and 
not not even necessarily for law, but be ready to sit down for three years and focus on something. That's what the tutors will be looking for in personal statements and in the interview. And you can show that not just with supercurriculars, but extracurriculars, positions of responsibility, anything that you've had to show dedication towards. They want to make sure that you will be able to cope with the workload and won't give up after a year, two years, be there for the whole three years or, or four in pulling this case. Yeah, amazing. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this video and giving me all of your insight about what it's like to study law here. But thank you guys again so much for joining me. And if you guys have any other questions about law or Oxford life in general, put them in the, like, in the comments below and I'll try and pass it forward to these guys just so they can answer it as well. Um, and I guess I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.